Now I'm going to ask you to put on your thinking caps, as they used to say in Romper Room. And we're going to look at some information from the WISC for Spanish. Now that is an adapted test for school age kids. The WISC for Spanish examiner's manual, manual is one of the most interesting manuals around. What they did in the WISC for Spanish, they said, you know, we actually looked at our data and we realized that we had two very different profiles. So they divided into the kids into two groups. The kids that were, they put some kids into two different groups. Group A is the kids who have less than a fifth grade, less than five years of education in the U.S. and their parents have an eighth grade education or less. So group A kids are the kids who are tend to be from lower socioeconomic background, parents have an eighth grade education or less, SES and parents' education are highly correlated. Group B were the kids whose parents were college graduates and they had five years or more of schooling in the U.S. So here you have the other end of the continuum. Now there's a lot of kids in between that aren't talked about in this analysis. Group A, kids whose parents have an eighth grade education or less, less than five years of schooling in the U.S., that end of the continuum. Group B, children whose parents are college grads who have five years or more of schooling in the U.S. Okay. What they found is the full-scale IQ, the mean, which we would expect to be 100, wasn't 100. For the children in Group A, parents' eighth grade education or less, less than five years of schooling in the U.S., if, they got a, if a child in Group A got a score of 100, an IQ score of 100, full-scale IQ, they would actually be in the 90th percentile compared to the other kids in Group A. If you, got, if you were in Group B, parents are college grads, and five years or more of schooling in the U.S., and you got an IQ of 100, you would be in the 37th percentile. So we're going to actually try to draw this out. Come over here, and we're going to look at a bell curve that I've drawn. It is my favorite shape, but I'm not very good at drawing it. So we're going to look at the kids in Group A. Kids in Group A, we have this particular child who scored 100, had a full scale IQ of 100. Group A kids are going to be in red. So we'd expect him to be here. And the bell curve for him would look something like This is the bell curve for group A kids. Parents have an eighth grade education or less, and they're less than five years of schooling in the US. The bell curve for group B, and uh, those are the kids with parents, are college grads. That child who got 100 IQ would actually be about here, and the bell curve for children in Group B would look something like this. So if you're looking at, I want a child, I want to find my gifted and talented children. I want to have the ones that are really smart to put in a gifted and talented. If I'm looking at Group A, parents with an eighth grade education or less, and less than five years of schooling in the U.S., if I look to an IQ of 115, we're probably talking maybe three standard deviations above the mean, certainly more than two. If you compare that child to the children in his group. If we look at the child in group B, parents are college grads, if they have an IQ of 115, maybe they're about the mean. And the difference is, it's an enormous difference, and the difference is Background, prior experiences, parents' educational level, a kind of schooling. Same thing over here. Now, if you think about these children in Group A, let's think about our IQ tests. When we think about a child in Group A, and we think of child in Group B, we don't think about these bell curves, we think about this one. So a child in Group A who might have an IQ of 74, 73, 
72, they might actually be functioning at the mean. But we're finding they're cognitively have a problem, have a learning problem. In fact, where the problem lies is not with the child. The problem lies in evaluators who think that they can use the same kinds of test results to identify disability. In fact, kids in Group A, why do we have so few kids in Group A and gifted and talented? Because people aren't taking this information and implementing it when they're identifying those gifted and talented kids. And how about these kids? Well, these kids, well, a lot of kids whose parents are college grads are in the gifted and talented programs. Why is that? Because we're comparing them to kids who have different experiences. These kids, 115, that's eh, the mean. No, we don't think of it that way. But let's, now we know why kids from Group A, parents, eighth grade, educational less, are not in gifted and talented programs. We're using assessment measures that are going, that are biased. Biased negatively against them and biased positively in favor of children whose parents are college grads.